All right, so welcome everyone to kind of a treat. Uh, I was on the internet and I happened to find this, and it is East versus West, uh, a Hearts of Iron game, and this was canceled in I believe March, uh, March of this year, and uh, it was in like a closed beta or something, and someone got a hold of it, and it is on the internet. Um, but yeah. It, it, was, it was actually pretty easy to find. But I'm not going to give a link or anything just because, um, you know, copyright stuff and uh, I don't want to deal with any of it. So, you know. But here we go. Uh, we have, I'll just explain a little bit about it. It's supposed to be, you know, be, it was supposed to be a, a uh, sequel to like a Hearts of Iron game and, you know, Hearts of Iron, historically, is from 1936 to, I think, 1960 something. It really doesn't cover the entire Cold War. Or it's from 36 to the end of World War II, and it never really covers the Cold War and the years afterwards. And this was the game they were making to, to do that. And it's based in the Hearts of Iron engine, whatever the engine is. I forget what it's called. But as you can see, we have uh, a few tabs here. We have the Cold War begins. It starts January 1st, 1946. As you can see, it's right after the war. Uh, Germany's still broken apart. It's uh, been divvied up by the Allies. And uh, the commit term here. Uh, you also have uh, May of or May of 1948 is the Arab-Israeli War, where uh, Israel is fighting uh, all these countries, basically. <laughs> and you can play as all of them. It doesn't have a description. You have the Korean War, 1950. As you can see, the North Korean, South Korea War. Also, you know, a bunch of stuff. You have the Vietnam War over here between, you know, South Vietnam and uh, North Vietnam. And then the last tab is the Afghanistan War in 1979, which has the Soviet Union and Brezhnev invading uh, Afghanistan. So we're going to play, I think, from 1950, the Korean War. And uh, let me see, who should I play as? I should play as someone. Someone. Now, the only reason I w don't want to play as, like, in Eng England or the Soviet Union is there's just, there's a lot to manage, and I am not the most familiar with the Hearts of Iron game. I've played Hearts of Iron 2 a lot. But I've played uh, Hearts of Iron 2 a lot, and 3 just was baffling. I could not wrap my head around Hearts of Iron 3. Uh, there was just so much uh, there. The learning curve was so steep from the other Hearts of Iron uh, that I just never played it. I never delved into it, and it uses the same system. Uh, or this game uses the same system. So I think we'll play as, I want to say England, just because uh, we're like, uh, we're an important power still kind of. We have land across the world. And uh, yeah. So I think I'm going to play as the United Kingdom. Or maybe I should play as someone smaller. Maybe play as Denmark, right in the middle of it. Yeah, but I think I'm going to play as England, just because uh, we're significant. So let's uh, let's start it up and see what happens. So we're adapting history for everyone, and uh, we have a quote here. It says, uh, "Forgive our enemies, but never forget their names." JFK. So this loads uh, pretty far fast. The game loads really slow, but I just assume that's because it wasn't, you know, it was still in beta and some shit wasn't worked out. Now, when I downloaded downloaded this first. Um, I'll switch over here real quick. When I downloaded this the first time, uh, there was no patch, but I believe a, a patch was released on December 2nd or something. So uh, I got the patch, and the game has been running very, 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 very smoothly. And, uh, okay, we do have the unit sprites. I just wanted to make sure we had the sprites. So the Warsaw Pact is the leader, and NATO, the new leader, is the UK. So I'm the leader of NATO somehow. So we're at DEFCON 2. You're at war. Alertness is set to DEFCON 2. Change DEFCON to 2. So, immediately off, or right off, you see that we have the DEFCON system in this game, and it, 
It's your nation's alert posture. I'll just hover over it real quick. DEFCON 1 is nuclear war is imminent. You're about to, you know, uh, you know, nukes are on the way. Uh, DEFCON 2 is further increase in force readiness. Nukes are on the alert and ready. DEFCON 3 is we're ready a little bit. There might be some action. DEFCON 4 is intelligence watch, strengthen security measures, and DEFCON 5 is the lowest state of readiness. There's also a doomsday clock here. And this is the doomsday clock. It's a symbolic clock maintained by the board of directors of Bolton of Atomic Science. Uh, the closer the clock is to midnight, the closer the world is to global nuclear war. So, that's that. We have our symbol here. We are part of NATO, I believe. Uh, if I go to the diplomacy screen, we can go to alliances, NATO, and uh, here you go. These are the NATO countries. We're all in NATO. There's also the United Nations and the Warsaw Pact, obviously. So we are NATO. Uh, for for no reason, we are the leader of the NATO. But as NATO, we ha we are allied with you know most of mainland Europe. I don't think uh, West Germany becomes NATO until way late in the game. So it's 1950. We are at war. Um, I might run out of supplies and fuel, and that's because the game doesn't know how to, or your country, the computer, doesn't know how to buy fuel. But the rest of the countries will buy fuel and supplies, so I'll probably have to use cheat codes to just, you know, give myself supplies and fuel. Um, my country is at war. Let's see, I have units that are available deployed, I have units in poor supply, I have international decisions that are available. I cannot ratify the fourth Geneva Convention <laughs> so I don't know if I'm gonna do that but uh, let's look at my economy real quick here's the economy tab we're building factories we're, and this is your basic economy uh, uh, tab that you saw in all the other games and it tells you you know what's being built where how much of it's being built it's kind of like uh, Victoria 2. This is more like a Victoria 2 screen. You have armaments, which is very uh, Hearts of Iron-esque. It's got all your units that are being built, where you're building your theater, your your theaters, where you're building troops, where you have troops. Uh, you have land troops that you can build, as you can see here. I have armored divisions and all that good stuff. Uh, how do I go back? Uh, how do I go back? How do I go back? I guess I don't. How do I go back? Oh, here you go. X. Uh, you have air units, as you can see here. I have fight aircraft, attack aircraft, mutual aircraft, and all these pictures I think is really cool. All the pictures will upgrade uh, the more your jets become available and all that cool stuff. So, and we have naval, and uh, as England, uh, we should have a formidable navy. As you can see, because this game was still in beta, there are no images for destroyers, missile frigates, but we have cruisers, missile destroyers, missile cruisers. Uh, carriers, th that kind of stuff. So we do have uh, pictures for them, which is all good. All right, enough of this tab. Uh, I believe this is the economy tab. You have the armaments tab. Or no, that was the armaments tab. Is the economy tab this? Okay. The budget screen, the infamous budget screen. So now this, they've made it very simple. Uh, before you used to drag and move these, right? and the other ones would move so you kind of had to balance it out now you just have to make sure that you're making positive money so we're at war so let's reinforce upgrades aren't really necessary right now we want to make enough money to deal with stuff national stockpile uh, let's just stock everything we need it uh, trade computer does trade on its own I believe it just oh, I, it does but I just don't think it buys I don't think it buys the supplies. I don't know. We'll have to find out. We have the politics screen, and politics is just the politics of your nation. As you can see, there's there's so many. There's has to do with foreign policy and intelligence and armaments. You can go to, uh, I, I don't have it unlocked, but you can do nuclear, close air support, lateral waters, combined arms. You can do the astronautical focus for the space race. There's a nuclear policy you can do. It's it's crazy, but uh, educational. What was mine? Agricultural. So we're making food. 
Okay. Economic resource base. Welfare state. Technology based. Huh. Tax reduction. We don't have any tax. And high educational funding. Let's do very high funding. Okay. We're weariness. We don't have any impact from nukes. We don't have any... Um, but we do have a little bit of war weariness just because of we're being at war. We can also create puppet states and liberate countries. Because we are England, we can release our colonial nations. As you can see, Belize, Brunei, all the different countries. Um, but I won't do that until I absolutely have to. You have the laws here. And we also have your Western European cultures. We're Christian. Um, uh, you know, we can, I don't, I guess we can change it at some point if we have other ones. We have civic focus right now as our people. Um, I should probably change it to equality. What's this? Point two. Let's see this one. Sure. And then we have our attitude is colonialism uh, right now. And it should be like. It should be like hedge money or balance of power. So, something. I don't know. But we are a colonial power, so. And then we have our Intel screen. This is just like all the other Intel screens in the Hearts of Iron games. It just tells you kind of uh, what's going on, who's got where. Uh, you know, uh, Indonesia right now has elections suspended. It has their political parties and stuff. So let's start it up. So I'll move it to speed three, and we'll just go along with it. So I'm trying to see. Actually, let's turn it down to speed two. We are at war. I think this is a uh, Hearts of Iron is usually a game you play at a quick pace. And we're at war, and as you can see, we're at war with uh, the North Korean People's Army. These guy, Communist Party of Korea. Uh, Costa Rica ratifies the Fourth Geneva Convention. And uh, yeah, all good stuff. So right now, uh, the Korean War has started. It's June of 1950. And let's, uh, let's bump this up. Like speed four. Okay, so you know this is happening. They're at war. The Koreans will probably try to intercept. See, I'm losing supplies. It doesn't look like I'm buying any. Mm, are we trading any? I don't know. I can't tell. All I know is uh, I'll have units in poor supply later on, and I'll wonder why. Whoa, the lag. So. The, I don't think NATO's doing anything. I think we're at war, but I don't think NATO is doing anything personally. The U.S. does look like it has an army stationed in Japan. They own Okinawa. So uh, we're just hoping that the uh, <laughs> the South Koreans can do it themselves because I don't have an army in the region to assist. Actually, I think Indonesia's already gotten their independence. The Netherlands has like one province here. And they own, like, uh, this region as well. Oh, man, the lag is real. Oh, I own uh, Hong Kong. That's right. Do I have an army here or a navy? I do have a navy. The Hong Kong fleet. Whoa, what's this? Uh, arms being sold to embargoed nations. The glut of surplus World War II arms has created quite a lucrative market or market for black market arms dealers who are willing to sell to the world's more unsavory elements. The worldwide abundance of surplus firearms mean that prices are low and demand is high wherever the armed conflict rages. Our internal security has just covered an illicit arms trafficking ring operating out of our country, but has not made any moves against it yet. And so how shall we proceed? So I can None of our business. I gain dissent, or I can organize an inquiry, or I can just crack down on it immediately. I think I'm going to crack down on it, because that's the right thing to do, guys. Sorry if that's really loud. Let's see. What kind of... I have destroyers, transports, escort carriers, and a cruiser here. So, let's... Look at the T-80 or T-90. I think I should move this fleet somewhere. Are these guys my allies? Negotiate. I am allied with them. Um, maybe some licenses. I don't. I don't offer demand. Here we go. 
I don't know. No, whoa, cancel. I don't know how to. I don't know how. But uh, I know that ooh, somehow I will get men there. Yeah, see, I'm losing supplies. Let me see if I can do something about that. There you go, supplies. Is it supplies or supply? I thought it was supplies. It is supplies. Supplies gives you 1,000, which is what we need. But, uh, yeah, I don't think, uh, yeah. Okay, so, uh, here we go. A new UN member. This is one of the perks of being one of the, you know, UN members, uh, UK, France, um, Russia, Italy, US, Canada, is you have, you're a UN permanent member. We have the option of vetoing certain countries that you want in the union. So we can go, and if you look at Nepal, we look at Nepal and say, all right, hold on, let's see what Nepal is. They're a National Democratic Party. They're just, they're Nepal. There's nothing, you know, we're at peace, you know, looks like they're good, so we don't veto them. But it's say maybe Iran wants to join the United Nations, and maybe Iran is, you know, uh, whatever the, the case may be. Maybe the Soviet Union has installed a communist government in Iran, or they're doing some shady stuff. They're at war with people you don't want them to be at war with. You can veto their UN uh, joining process, and then they have to, you know, go through a loophole, <laughs> basically, is what it turns into. They have to go through a loophole, and they have to uh, deal with that. Now, uh, these buttons, there are battle planners and stuff that you can do. I don't know how to do any of them just because I'm unfamiliar. And there's a nuclear map mode. And this is the more interesting of the of the map modes. And it doesn't look like people. a lot of people have many nukes right now. The U.S. has nukes. Oh, actually, this is telling me my striking distance of my nukes. So let's see how far they'll go. I guess I don't. So we don't have any warheads. Or do I have... I have four warheads as the UK. So, basically, you have to be a DEFCON 1 to go nuclear. And basically, you open the case, and then you hit the button, and you choose where you nuke. And that was one of the things they, they you know, they went over. And as you can see here, we have uh, four warheads. We can maximize salvo. If you have them on subs or, or plane delivered nukes, you can also send them up and you can deliver nuclear war. And uh, I don't know how it works quite yet. I think it just tells me my the countries where, I, where, where they are. My nukes are all based here though, in Birmingham, apparently. I think it's Birmingham. Yeah, they're all based in Birmingham. <laughs> the, the, all four nukes. And you can choose where where to drop a nuke. It also tells you um, who you're at war with, I guess, with the stripes or something. I don't know what that is. Is that who? Is that them being conquered? Well, so what's this? Use AI for targeting. Selects countries. What's this? Selects regions. That probably would be your best shot. Is selecting regions to salvo. So let's see how the war is progressing. It's not. It looks like South Korea is going nowhere with the war, and neither is North Korea. That's all good. I'm glad the Americans have really jumped in. Although, I really don't think the Americans get um, into it until 51, I want to say. Is when America really gets into the swing of the war. Because uh, North Korea usually should push them down to Busan, and only Busan. And then the U.S. should invade and and you know con reconquer it, and then push back north of the parallel. But I don't know. I haven't you know played. So I just remembered, and I'm an idiot because I forgot. Is um, we have research, as you can see, there's NATO research, and there's Warsaw Pact research, and there's there's all sorts of war research and different types of vehicles and space and nuclear and stuff like that. So I'm going to do, I think, what am I going to do? I'm in positive supply for the first time in forever. So for NATO, we can do the containment doctrine. 
But let's see if we can do like a regular doctrine too. I've never tried, honestly. Let's do atomic theory and try it. Okay, so we can do we can do a couple. We can research a couple at a time. It'll cost you as long as you have the money to do it, you can research it, which is good. We have a lot of money. Uh, so let's do atomic theory and we'll do main battle tank. A new main battle tank, maybe. Desert warfare capability. How would we know eventually? But uh, I know the future because I'm. I like to think myself smart. I know the future, so let's do body armor, and then we'll do uh, jungle warfare equipment because I I know where this is going to be going. We're gonna end up here following the the Americans and all that stuff. So it looks like North Korea has broken the backs of the. South Korean defenders here on this flank and the North Koreans are going to pour in surround the forces at Seoul and uh, as you can see loyalist forces here to South Korea and they're gonna make a push for the conquest of the country hopefully America will get involved eventually and I'll probably commit some troops as well if I find the troops to spare. Well, I do have the troops to spare. But as England, I also own the, the Suez Canal. Port said, disgruntled rabble, oppressive. We are oppressive in nationalism. Um, this is what two years after the Israeli-Palestinian war. So Israel is a country, and they're uh, they're not dominant in the Middle East, but they're there. So we're just kind of playing back up to the U.S. right now. Let's see. Do they have armies moving anywhere? They have some troops moving. It doesn't look like they're moving a navy. Huh. They're not marching south like they should be. If I was the North Koreans, I'd sweep around. Although I don't know if they have the forces to do that, but I'd sweep around and completely encircle the, uh, the defenders. Whoa, what's going on? Go, go. Oh, the Austrians. What the hell's going on? Why am I being attacked? Oh, I'm being attacked by rebels in this in this province. So basically Austria is yet to be reformed. I believe that happens at a later date as well. But as you can see here, if you part of the Warsaw Pact do have <laughs> Warsaw Pact like um, unit sprites. And if you're part of NATO, you have like NATO unit sprites. So I think that's pretty cool. So we won the battle. And I don't know what that was all about, but we won it. And we are at war, so let's see what we have here. We have ships. We have three transports, which means I can transport like 3,000 men or something. So let's take the first division, the London division. We'll march them to Bournemouth. And we'll move the Royal Fleet to Bournemouth. And there's no ship sprites, it's all walking soldiers. Like I said, it was in closed beta or closed alpha or something like that. But uh, I think if we get the chance, we're going to redeploy troops to Korea to help our our um, friends. Although it doesn't look like anything's happening really. They're a war, but they're not. I simply just don't have uh, troops in this region. So let's look at the diplomacy screen. I am at war with... Uh, where the hell are they? The Republic. The People's Republic. That's... Where the hell are they? Are they not in the diplomacy screen? Oh, here they are. Agreements. The DPRK. The Democratic People's Republic of Korea. And someone's messaging me on Skype. I think it's on Skype. Hold on, let me look. 
But uh, yeah, we can't negotiate. Only the faction leader can negotiate, and that seems to be the Americans. That's usually who it is. So, go America. Deal with them. Oh, look. The Americans actually do have an HQ there. So the Americans do have troops now in Korea to deal with the problem, which is good because uh, I don't know that I would. If I do, I'm I'm leaving troops there basically. So also, let's move this first army HQ. They'll be the first to arrive in Korea, I believe. This is the theater HQ, army HQ, three divisions. Up and the game crashed. Lovely.